Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV and welcome to my special guest today. Uh, we have um, two of the UK's most accomplished comic book creators, Mr. Rob Williams, the author of many fine books, including Class War and Low Life, and Mr. Chris Weston, the artist of many fine books, including The Twelve and Ministry of Space. How are you guys? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, very good. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, mate, thanks for joining us. It's great to see you both. And we're here to talk about um, your your new new book that's out from Rebellion, Judge Drag Control, which is available from the links attached to this video. So, guys, what can you tell me, first of all, about Judge, Judge Drag Control, which I know is a sequel of sorts to The Small House? Well, it's not... It is a tiny... It just it, it happens later than after The Small House. It's not a sequel, per se. It's kind of... it. It's kind of a collection of a bunch. Chris and I have done a bunch of Judge Dredd stories over over the last few years, and and Chris has, has written a couple of Dreads as well. So it's really it's um it's kind of like a Chris Western collection, really. It's just they just sort of squeezed in all Chris's stories of the last few years into one beautiful looking book. So um, but there are um there the the but the main story in it is about Judge Dredd facing off against a a serial killer SJS judge called uh, Judge Pin, and that is um. That's that's the the central narrative, but then there's a bunch of other fun stories around it as well. Uh, to me, it feels you know, like um, a sort of a, an achievement uh, met, really, because it's, it's like having my own uh, Titan book. Um, because I I grew up on the old uh, Chronicles of Judge Dredd Titan books that they had, and uh, you know I've still got a full set of them, and they're, they're some of my favourite possessions, and. Uh, having this book out feels like oh finally i've got my own <laughs> titan book yeah that 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 makes a lot of sense actually it's funny how those classic titan editions of dread um echo through eternity people yeah. are always name checking those as as the collections i know that they're they're garth ennis's favorite you know judge Dredd collections i've got a bunch time. of them up there actually just if you yeah, can see but it's on. just i mean they are i mean every now and again i don't tell anyone in rebellion i pick them a few up off, off ebay or whatever because it's just it's the beautiful way to look at the, the yeah classic i literally bought one off ebay today i finally got the block mania one today oh okay oh well, that's oh, my, probably my favorite mick mcmahon dread cover ever is the yeah, block mania amazing. titan cover yeah yeah extraordinary yeah, my, my only my only um, kind of hope, well, I, it's an impossible hope because it didn't happen, but I would have loved the Cursed Earth, you know, to feature the, the you know, the Burger Wars and whatnot and to have the, the Jolly Green Giants and all that and those original collections. Because if I remember correctly, I don't think they do, right? I think that the collections skip those. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Rebellion recently published a yeah, Cursed Earth collection with, with those kind of added to it, yeah. Yeah, no, they did. So, so, um, so Pin, Pin does appear in in the small house, right? No, she doesn't. No, she's she's a new, brand new character that Chris and I um, came up with. I mean, Chris and I were sort of talking about sort of uh, one of the key things with Dread over the years. He he has the best rogues gallery, the best villains in in comics, but he tends to kill them all. Basically, mm. they just <laughs> they don't tend to hang around a lot. No. So we were kind of when we were talking about sort of what we wanted to do with Dread next at one point, we kind of were, there was a general I think feeling from both of us that you know what well, Dread could do with a really good memorable villain again. So that was the kind of the impetus. Yeah, and and to have a villain who was who was cleverer than him, I think was mm. the idea. Someone who could run intellectual circles around him a bit. So yeah, I love it. I love it. I, and and I think uh, it's also a, a visually arresting character. Where did you come up with the, how did you guys work up the design for Pin? <laughs> uh, well, it was loosely based on Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> That's in there. Yeah. 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 So That's... she was kind of, she was on our telly an awful lot of the time and it was yeah. just yeah. like, yeah. yeah, there's something terrifying there. So, yeah. She was terrifyingly inescapable during that period of time. Yeah, That's... yeah. Well, now we look back and I think, you know, at a time we thought we can't get worse than this, surely. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yet here we are. <laughs> yeah. Now we look yeah. back on the May days, it's like some sort of halcyon period. <laughs> yeah. When, when Brexit was the only thing we had to worry about. But no, it's, um, it, it was also sort of, um, it was a little bit of sort of uh, Roald Dahl in there as well, was sort of, um, 
you know, Roald Dahl's villains are all sort of, the name sort of pin was kind of like the very sort of, it felt like a Roald, you know, Roald Dahl kind of thing. And the fact that she's very thin and very sort of androgynous, it was all just trying to create a creepy character more than someone who could, most, a lot of Dredd's villains sort of will, could physically be terrifying, mm. you know, in terms of overpowering him or something. Mm. And that's not her at all. She's going to, she's going to get you when you're not, when you're not expecting it. Now, you guys have both been associated with uh, Dread on and off for a, for a very long time. Uh, and what, what's your what's your feeling about working on Dread as, as, as a character, get, given the huge influence that the character has within British comics and the huge status that Dread has within British comics? What's it actually like working with him, you know, creating, you know, creating stories around? It's just good fun, basically. I, I, I find Judge Dread really good fun because in the in you can do all different types of stories with him. He's, he's very flexible, and the world he's in is, is broad enough. If you want to do a comedy story, you can do it. If you want to do like a dark thriller, you can do it. You can even do a love story if you want, somehow. It's just, it just lends itself to so many different kinds of stories. I mean, it's partly the nostalgia thing because we, I mean, we, we, we grew up sort of reading this stuff and loving it. So you get a chance to sort of, to, you know, to play in that, in that world is. Um, is just like as Chris says, just fun and a treat and exciting. But I, I mean, I think he's fascinating because, as Chris says, you can tell any kind of story in Dread's world. Um, it's a great tapestry, but also he is a character being, um, he's very interesting as well because he is this stoic, um, sort of uh, hard, you know, the ultimate hard man. But he's he's kind of like a churning whirl of emotions underneath. So you you can, you can sort of you can have fun with writing the inner dread as well as the more kind of robocopish outer dread, you know? Um, so, um, yeah, I, 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 I always really enjoy writing dread. It's, it, it's just, it's a huge amount of fun. And I like, I like the way um, he, he has progressed over the 40 yeah. years during his publication. He's not, he's not the same character he was 40 years ago. And I think he's definitely uh, less sure of himself now. Yeah. I think, I, yeah, I, I just, older dread is is i think far more fun to write than i couldn't i think younger dread would be a little sort of would be fun but it would be a little more one note you know as we all get older yeah you can see more of the um as chris says he's like there's sort of glacial character changes happening in over over a long period i think but um but yeah it's um yeah he's he's such an amazing character which is why he's he's still going strong after all these years and that is such an interesting way to put it, I think, about the glacial changes in this character, because as you both say, you know, uh, Dredd's kind of a cipher in the early years, you know, and he's just the, he just delivers one thing. And um, I, I, I think the, the opportunities that working with that, you know, tempestuous inner life of his and working with the changes in attitudes or whatnot, that, I mean, that's a great place to be in, actually. I think uh, it's it's nice to be able to you know, abandon the constructs of just that original Dread formula and do something wider with it, which is what you guys are doing. Yeah, but, but and also, I think, I mean, you, you look at the legacy. I mean, it's very difficult to think of a better drawn comic character. If you look about sort of, you know, you go back to when we were kids and what we were reading then, and you had Bolland and McMahon and Steve Dillon and... You know, it's amazing. So, I mean, you know, and I think genuinely embarrassing, Chris, I think Chris is, you know, up there, which is what you see in control, you know what I mean? And sort of people like Henry Flint these days, it's um, it, it's just, that that's one of the appeals. Carlos, we should talk about, of course, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I think, um, I think PJ's creeping into the all time great. Yeah, PJ Holden's doing some great work these yeah, days yeah. on Dread as well. So, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, there's a constant, but one of the thing of being a weekly comic in 2080s, you get a lot of hands, hand, you know, doing dread. And, and I, I've, I've always loved that the style changes week to week. You will get, you can have Chris's style and Henry Flint's style, and it somehow all still fits, you know, um, which is not always the case with, with a lot of comic characters. Well, you can't get more different than Bolland and McMahon. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it just shows how strong the character is that he. he he, he can look completely different, drawn by two completely different artists with two completely different styles. It's still, it's still dread. Yep. Yeah, right on. 
Yeah. I, 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 and do you guys have any plans to do any more dread between the two of you? Have you got, have you got stuff in the future? Have you got places you want to go and take dread that you've not been able to do so far? Um, I've, I've just completed a, uh, um, uh, another one off dread, uh, which I've written. I don't want to give too much away about it, but, um, what I can give as a teaser is, uh, I asked, uh, well, I got 2018 to ask John Wagner if I could do something rather awful to one of his creations and uh, one of the earliest Judge Dread creations, and he said, yes, go for it. So something horrible is going to happen. That's all I can say. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Oh, then they'll kill to... off Walter the robot. I tell That's you. exactly <laughs> who I was thinking of, mate. Yeah. I can't say. <laughs> There'll be uproar. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, hopefully, Chris and I have talked about another sensitive Clegg story that we might get. That to will happen. Point. Yeah, um, we've got we've got what what we think is a really good one. Made us laugh, anyway. So, um, um, yeah, and I mean, I, you know, I'm writing more dread. Um, I've, I've written, I've, you know, I've written the the pilot script for the TV show, which we all hope that happens, you know, but we, you know, uh, that's in development. Um, so um, yeah, uh, definitely more dread in the future. Absolutely. I mean, my ultimate ambition is, is for us to bring back a, and do another uh, dread Batman. Oh mate. That, that, that would be amazing. Yeah. You'd do such a great job of that as well, mate. That'd, that'd be good. awesome to see. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting for it to, to, to do a new Dread Batman book now, because I think both characters have really evolved since their old team ups. I mean, Dread's in, in some kind of way has, has mellowed out a bit and he's a bit more confused and less sure about his uh, calling in life. Whereas Batman has just <laughs> gone full fascist, really. He's yeah. just like a, a block of ice now compared. He's the less human one out of the two of them now, I think. Yeah. No, so true. He's a million miles away from that. The the old uh, 50s Dick Sprang Batman. Yeah. That yeah. guy's just not in the in the DNA at all now. They've kind of switched roles in a funny sort of way. It'd be nice to explore that. Mm. Oh, that's such an interesting point. I, I, I think that'd be fascinating. And do you do you guys have outside of Dread, uh, have you got any other interesting projects you're working on with Rebellion? Not really. I'm a I'm slow, <laughs> slow artist, unfortunately. Uh, so it's just one job at a time, really. Uh, I've currently got, um, I'm doing a Judge Hershey um, series in 2000 AD, which is running at the moment, um, with Simon Fraser from Simon Boland. Um, in terms of uh, with Rebellion, yeah, um, apart from writing, you know, more dread, um, nothing lined up right now. But um, I mean, I've got uh, myself, Lawrence Campbell and Ollie Masters have got a new uh, original graphic novel, a creator own book coming out uh, next month. Uh, which is going to be in Forbidden Planet, and it's going to be, I think, a signed booklet in Forbidden Planet um, uh, called Old Haunts. So, um, yeah, excited about that. Oh, you should come back on and talk to us about that, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'd love to. I think February, the maybe February the 15th, if I've got the, the, the date right, is when it's in shops. Let's get it done. We'll, we'll do that for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll do. And, and uh, any hints about what it is you're working on at the moment, Chris? Uh, outside of the dread stuff oh, i don't think i'm allowed to say oh, that's, that's all right, right. That, everything that's... i've done it's just covered by ndas at the moment um uh, yeah, look, i've just recently finished work on a quite a, a, a big film uh, and uh, uh well, let's just say it's 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 another dream come true moment for me uh but i, I can't say any more than that that's uh, that... Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I, I, some of your some of your previous film work has been fascinating stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, a lot more didn't get made than actually did end up on the big screen. I think I've counted. Uh, I think there's ten films I've worked on now, but only two have made it to the big screen. <laughs> Are any of your designs in the? Um, uh, I forgot what it's called. The uh, the Rogue One TV show that's coming. Oh yes, yeah, of course, yeah, completely forgot all about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did some a couple of weeks on the. Um, oh, was it Cassian Andor? Yes, that's it. TV series, yeah, yeah. So that, that's coming out. I don't think that's coming out this year. I think that's next year. Mate, that's a that's a big win. On those guys are on fire at the moment. I mean that that whole production unit. I mean the Mandalorian completely exceeded my expectations. It was it was very much more than I ever thought it was going to be. So uh, in pure entertainment terms, 
So I think the, you know, I mean, you've worked with such an interesting cross section of people, both of you guys. What's it like flipping from, you know, working on TV related stuff into back into comics? Is it a very similar process? Do you find it very different? Do you find the input you get different? Um, it's weird, actually. I was writing the TV script last week. I mean, I flipped back onto comics this week and it is, it's, it's just how you, it's more about pacing more than anything else. It is kind of quite funny. There's a little bit more freedom, I suppose, in just you're not contained to writing panel one, panel two, panel three on the, on the script, but, but essentially you're doing, you're doing the same job, you know. Um, the process is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's still, it's a bit like being an, I always compare it, it's a bit like being an athlete, you know, whether or not you're, an eight, you're doing 800 metres or you're doing, you know, a mile, you know what I mean? You're still essentially running. It's just like, this, you just got to pace it a little bit differently. But yeah, but it's something I enjoy. How about yourself, Chris? Uh, I think that the film stuff uh, re requires a much bigger uh, re repression of your ego. Uh, if, I mean, the movie with comics, I'm, I'm allowed... Like pretty pretty much from 2008, you know, complete freedom to draw whatever and how, however I like, you know, you know, within reason. But um, when you work on a film, you're, you're very much fulfilling someone else's vision, so you you have to uh, sort of knuckle down, and you're not drawing what's in your head; you're trying to draw what's in someone else's head. Yeah, no, that money's that, that, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So before we guys, before we close out. If somebody picks up a control and loves what you're doing, you know, with the script and art, which of your projects outside of the Dread Rebellion universe would you push people towards, you know, that you'd say, if you like this, you need to pick this up? Um, oh, it's a difficult one. A a, sorry, or what, what are you most proud of, you know, each of them? Hmm. I think Ministry of Space and the Filth really is always a good go-to ones. Yeah, I'll be commercial and say, because Old Haunt is out next month, I'll say Old Haunt, Steph. Um, of course, yeah, that, that goes the um, same. I did, I did a, a book for uh, Vertigo a couple of years ago called Unfollow, and we, that ran for about 18 issues, and I think that's some of my best work. Um, if I was ever, you know, had to push sort of what's your best stuff, maybe the, maybe it might be that. And thanks for answering that, gents, because I appreciate it's always a it's always a tough question to uh, to answer. But all the books that we've just been discussing, you're going to be all the ones that are in print. We've got at Forbidden Planet. You'll find in the links attached to this video. So, guys, um, we have been talking at Forbidden Planet TV to Rob Williams and Chris Weston about Judge Drag Control, which is an epic Judge Trail. Judge Tale Trail, maybe it's a trail, a Judge Tale with, with great script and beautiful art. And uh, you can check it out right here. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. It's really great to see you oh, both. Thank, well, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for having us. Man. Always. I'll see you soon. Take care. Right. Hey, cheers. Bye bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, Subscribe right here. See you soon.